Hi guys! Hi! Hey! How are you- how are you guys doing? Hi! Hello everybody, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast! I'm alright, how are you? Will, what's up? You doing a lot with your hands? Hey, what's up all you- all you cool cats and kittens out there oh. in, the, in the internet world? How- how y'all- how y'all doing today? You have to get really close Fine to the Tuesday mic. Afternoon. You have to get really close to the mic when you say that. You got to get really sexy with like that. Like that, that right there. Hello, all you cool cats and kittens out there. Oh, you want me to do the the sexy, yeah, very white DJ voice? I was watching the Conan O'Brien YouTube channel put up an interview with Barry White today. Oh, and apparently, for all you Zoomers out there, Barry White <laughs> was a musician. Uh, he was a singer, and he was very famous. Uh, for having a very deep and sexy voice. Ask your parents about him. <laughs> uh, but the punchline is, Conan asked him if anybody had ever told Barry White that they had made love to his music, and he said, yes, they would show me the kids they conceived to their to my music. Oh, no. I don't like that. that is, I mean, he seemed to dig it. <laughs> You learn things but, here at the Wolf Den yeah. Podcast. Today, I just learned Barry White's still alive. He's not. This is an older interview. Today, I I <laughs> today I today learned that he's alive, and then I learned that, no, he is not. He is dead. So you learn things here at yes. the Wolf Den Podcast. How old was this interview? This is from the 90s. Oh my God! Okay, so he yeah. has been dead. He has been dead. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Anyway, we're 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 growing here. Okay, I want to yeah. talk to some of you. We got the the Zama with nine months. Our baby is almost here. I hate it. I hate it. Bear bear fifteen ninety eight. Thank you for the three months. Hello, hello. Uh, RP, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Bob and Will, hope you two are doing well. Bob, just want to let you know that Scootish is struggling to speedrun Mario 64. I know. It's because I uh, I should talk to him a little bit today. Uh, I want to speedrun yeah. race him in Mario 64. And I don't know any of the speedrun strats in Mario 64. Yeah. I, don't, I only know. I just learned the the MIPS skip and the, um, uh, the, the uh, what's the other one? Oh, the backwards long jump. The, the, that's those are the two essential things you need to do in order to to break the game enough to speed run it. Um, right. But I don't know any of the other like intricate ones. Uh, but I want to speed run race Jackson just because I think I can beat him by sheer experience. I think okay. if I just do those two skips, I can. Mm he's gonna spend like an hour trying to friggin uh do a little thing to like get through the cage on the chain chomp meanwhile I'll just do the chain chomp and get it you know what i mean yeah i guess no i got you anyway uh or i could just i could straight up just get made a fool of uh jeffrey Sorensen, thank you for the 10 months can't tell you how much i'm loving animal crossing 2.0 and the paid dlc so much new content to explore and collect uh thank you for the 10 months the Animal Crossing DLC came out. You can now uh, have Brewster on your island. You can have some coffee. I was a little excited about this, uh, yeah. and I, I wanted to try it. But then I just watched somebody else do it, and I was like, what's the difference? I feel like Animal Crossing update, it's not going to be something you're going to notice unless you're heavily invested in the game. Oh, you know, because yeah. like, it's such a subtle game. Like, if you were to show me something from the Animal Crossing update, as, as someone who hasn't played the, the base game, mm. I would just assume it's part of the base game. I mean, I played a decent amount of Animal Crossing. So I feel like right. uh, I feel like I, I, I played a decent amount. So I looked at it, and it's different. But, like, I saw, like, Wood and Jackson just sitting in the, in the coffee shop and, like, chilling. Mm. And I was like, all right, I guess that's the update. <laughs> like this is this is all the stuff you get in the update you just look at it it's not like yeah. it's not really like like Mario there's an update in Mario like there's a new Mario Maker update look there's new yeah. items in the game and you can uh, you can do all these different new texts and stuff but or, or like DLC and like I don't know Celeste you get all these new levels to play but in this yeah. it's like here's this new item you can look at here's this new area you can sit in 
like it's not really uh a... yeah that, that that's what i mean like if you didn't know any better you would assume that's part of the base game like yeah. with the sims you know every time they release a sims update it's like oh i just assumed that was part of the base game <laughs> franken berries or busts is not bob reducing the update to just brewster there was a lot in the update <laughs> but i just don't care about anything but brewster um toy kenobi with five months thank you five months boys uh, Razzle Jazzle with the gift sub to that designer guy streams. Thank you very much, Razzle Jazzle. We got underscore with 47 months. Scam train? What? I think there was a hype train in the chat. Listen, we don't do hype trains around here, so don't call me a scam no. train. Um, I'm so much me. Thank you for the seven months. Hi, Bob and Will. Hello. Uh, Hello. Drew Suave with the 16 months. Hi, guys. Hope all is well. Are you guys looking forward for the holidays? Uh looking forward no. to <laughs> i mean i don't really do anything it's the I'm same old look- same old yeah. for me like like i i work the same amount every single week no matter what and uh i see my family every other week so like it's not gonna be any different <laughs> I'm already starting to think of like all the money I'm going to be spending this holiday season. And that's kind of like giving me Ajita. So I already spent a lot of money and I already have. I, I know we all know you got the new MacBook, Bob. Yeah, it's great. But man, my my pocket, my, my wallet felt it. I so I was pricing one out the other day and I mm-hmm. found uh, I found the uh, education discount website. So I did it through that just to say. Uh, and if you're eligible for an education discount, you can get Final Cut, Compressor, Logic, and I think Motion all bundled together for only $200. How much is it normally? Well, Final Cut alone is like 300 Oh. So, so you save a hundo on just Final Cut. Yeah. So for the price of like just Final Cut, you get all four of them. Gotta say, been editing on this bad boy. It is a beast. Yeah. Did a little After Effects the other day. Oh, daddy. Getting fancy. Uh, Dudley Dog, thank you for the hundo bits. I appreciate it. You know what I'm not looking forward to for the holidays? All the people. We're in New York. There's a million fucking people. You getting the tourists already? Yeah, it sucks. Get out of here. Like, like yeah. people just go out. It's not even... Tour. Yeah. I mean, it's not tourists yet. It's, it's slowly there'll be more and more tourists, but people just go out. And it's like, stay, get out of my yeah. way, stay home. Anyway, uh, there's nothing happening this week, so we decided. Uh, I beat Metroid Dread last night. Yay! Uh, Yay. Will is at the very end of Metroid Dread, so I we decided. At Raven Beak. I fought Raven Beak. I keep losing. Um, but I'm confident enough in my opinion on the game, and I'm pretty sure I can guess how it ends. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a countdown timer because the planet's going to explode. You have to get to your ship. (laughs) How'd you guess, Will? (laughs) Oh, gee, I don't know. (laughs) That's every every freaking Metroid game. Every Um, every Metroid. So, yeah, I I figured this would be a good time to talk about Metroid. And and I get a... I got the question I get every single. This is what we should have named the podcast. We might still name the podcast this. <laughs> Can I play the new Metroid if I haven't played any Metroid games before? And I think we uh, we've said this before, and I think definitively yes. we will say this again. You can play every Metroid game without playing any of the other Metroid games. Yes. Uh, there's barely any story in the main line yeah. Metroid games. Uh, this one is no exception. There's like little nods to older games, but you yeah. really don't need to there's, know anything about it. There's backstory and lore to it, but that's not the same as like, you know, watching like a TV show week to week. You know what I mean? Like, Yes, you have to watch the whole season in order to understand what's going on. Whereas in Metroid, all like the background and lore is just window dressing for what the main experience is. And the main experience is the game you are playing. 
Yeah, and I mean the the window dressing is very nice. It's very nice window yeah, dressing. Yeah, no, it's very good window dressing. But you don't need to know about the Chozo race and Samus's <laughs> backstory and her ongoing history with Ridley and Meta Ridley and Neo Ridley and Robo Ridley. So, you so, don't need to know any of that. So I actually uh, uh, I played Fusion, like, oh, and this draws like the 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 little story that's there draws a lot from Fusion, and. Yes. Uh, I I played Fusion a long time ago, and I I don't remember anything. Like like I, I I'm seeing all the nods to it, and it's like not it's not relevant enough where I would say you need to have played that game. Because even I, somebody who played that game, I'm still a little confused at some of the stuff that they talk about. Well, I think all the parts I remember from Metroid Fusion, they sh- they tell you in the very beginning of the game to set up the context right for the adventure you're about to go the on. The vaccine. Yes. I was like, oh, I remember that. I remember that from, from Fusion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- th- you really don't. You, you don't need to know anything. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, I mean, Fusion's great, though. You should play Fusion. If, yeah, you, know, no, if you can get your hands on it, it's freaking hard to play yeah. right now. <laughs> um, but wh- so wh- th- there's... I don't think people also are afraid to watch Metroid Dread content or listen to Metroid Dread content because they're afraid of spoilers. I don't mm-hmm. think you can really spoil this game. I think that you I think there's there's little twists that might spoil yeah. it. And we won't talk about that at all. But no. gameplay wise, I don't think you have to worry about hearing that you have to fight Raven Beak. The whole he's yeah. the, he's in the very beginning of the game, and the whole game is letting you know you're gonna have to fight Ravenbeak. So like yeah. that's not a spoiler. You don't have to worry about that. There um, are like one or two points that I would say are like spoiler e. One of them is kind of a big twist, and the other one is kind of like a neat little surprise. There, there were but like, like other than other than that, it's like you know, it, it's not like. Mario shows up at the end and offers to invite her to the <laughs> Smash Initiative or anything like that. There, there were two little twists, and uh, one of them didn't feel like a twist. I feel like it was it was like an obvious thing, and like yeah. like like not an obvious thing, but like I feel like it, it was going in that direction anyway. And then the other little twist, I still don't believe, and I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're we're not gonna talk about it because I don't want to. Uh, that's something that I really don't want to spoil. Right. Um. But yeah, well, well uh, the, the, one of the things I was like, really, what? Nah, it doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't make you're a bird. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this just in Jinx over here with twenty five gifted subs. I appreciate Jesus. that very much. Should we have sub goals here on the podcast? Hmm. Like, what would they be? What could we do for sub goals on the podcast? Listen, if, if if you're a podcast listener on YouTube or or uh, or uh, Spotify or, or a- Apple Music or what have you, yeah. uh, you could uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account and you can support us f- for free. Basically, uh, you just it it if you give us your Amazon Prime subscription, which you get for free every month, and you have to do it every single month, uh, we we just get free money. So that's like the best way yeah. to support us. Uh, so if you don't have a Twitch account, but you have Amazon Prime, you might as well make a Twitch account and then you can support us for free. And we would very much appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Lord DC, for the Prime. Thank you, Jinx. We love you too. Uh, how many subs for a drawing stream? I have to do a drawing stream. You guys already met the sub goal for that. Um, anyway, Back to Metroid. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're not. Don't worry about spoilers. It's not really. We're not really going to spoil much. But I do yeah. want to talk about Ravenbeak. Uh, very, very difficult final boss. Very difficult. He's not the most difficult boss I've played in a video game, but he might be the most difficult Nintendo. He might be the most difficult boss in a Nintendo video game. He's like the a, kind like of a difficult first party game. I I find this with myself. If I come across a difficult part in a game, I will just stop playing the game, even if I really <laughs> like the game. Right. 
and Ravenbeak is that kind of difficult. I'm curious. I, I'm very curious to, to hear your, your thoughts on him. No, no. So, like, so, like, full disclosure, I looked up our strategy guide on how to beat this guy because I want to beat this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and he has three phases. All the other Metroid bosses um, have at most two, but he has three. The first phase I can beat relatively easily. You know, I get some damage, but for the most part, like, I know what the patterns are. Mm-hmm. The second phase, it's a little bit more random, and he's got one move where he basically just shoots, like, a rainbow of bullets all yeah. around you, and it's very hard to dodge. Mm-hmm. And, like, that wipes out half your health, mm-hmm. like, in one hit. A lot of his moves do, so, like, an insane amount of damage. Yeah. So, and I can't, I haven't gotten past the second phase yet. Um, I'm forcing myself to power through and beat this guy because I honestly, I legitimately love this game so much that I want to see it through to the end. Mm-hmm. But I, I, there have been plenty of games like I condemn Two is one of them uh, where I love it. I recommend it to all my friends. I think it's great. I get to a certain point I cannot beat and I just stop playing the game. <laughs> So, so the the problem with Ravenbeak is that uh, it's three phases, three and a half, three point two maybe. Uh, yeah. There, there's there's a couple phases, and if you die on one of them, you do the whole fucking thing that's, over again, and, and that's ridiculous. It's it and and there's certain things you can do, like some of the phases you can't. One of the one of the mo- I think when he's gold, you can't do any damage. You you Correct. have to parry him, and yeah. uh, sometimes he just it's just RNG whether or not he's going to do the parry move or not. So like yeah. sometimes you just have to sit there and wait for him to do the thing, and like that's really annoying. Um, yeah. Otherwise, if you could fast track to the to the to the one that you to to the to the uh, the third phase, you know, uh, yeah. after you learn the first and second phase, if you could fast track to the third, that would have been great. Um, uh, one of the things that made it really difficult is that you kind of learn his patterns and how to dodge each one of his moves. Um, and then you get to the next phase and then you're like, now I got to relearn all these new patterns and stuff. Then you learn that yeah. and then you get to the third phase and then you got, then you don't know what to do and then you die and then you got to relearn that. So yeah, you have to replay all of these phases over and over again because you're learning the next phase and you, and you, you only learn by dying. So yeah. um, it's, it's, it's it is that's what makes it really difficult but uh yeah it is really fun to to uh to figure out his sort of move set and and dodge it it makes you feel like super powerful yeah. when you finally figure it once out once you get it down like it's it feels great like i said i can get through phase 1 pretty easily and like i just feel like so empowered but then at the same time that empowerment kind of makes me cocky and i get <laughs> blindsided by phase 2 so there's not really any moves that he did that uh, I felt like I couldn't dodge, like I like I was gonna get hit by it. There is there is one move th- that you can parry that I never even attempted to parry because I was like that's too fast. I'm never gonna be able to do that. Um, but there's another move. He in the third. Fa- did you get to the third phase? I have not gotten to the third phase. Did you get to, you got to the second phase though? I got to the second phase. Yeah. Third phase sucks. <laughs> Uh, but what makes I've the third what makes the third phase suck is that there's this giant like sun thing that he that he puts out. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, and that sucks. Uh, it, it, it uh, this might be a spoiler, so I'm not gonna say it. But there's a way to get rid of it. Uh, but you need to have a certain amount of items, and and it, it's kind of RNG whether or not he's gonna do it a certain amount of times. Yeah. So in the time that I finally beat him, he just didn't really do it that much. And I just I just so happened to, to yeah. uh, be able to get through it. But it didn't really take me that long. Um, I I got to it on uh, I got to it on Sunday night uh, and I only played him for like a half an hour. And I was like, I want to go to bed. I don't want to keep playing this yeah. anymore. And then last night I played him for like an hour and uh, and I beat it. So yeah. uh, sometimes. You need to put a game down for a minute and then come back yeah. and then you'll be able to do it. Most most of the bosses in this game I like put down and then came back to the next day and the, was able to get through them. Um, they, they, they were I haven't played this game in a long time, so I probably need to relearn that all over. I, I had to I had to de-rust a little bit. It's been a while yeah. since I played it too. 
Um, so there were a lot of people in my chat saying that uh, Ravenbeak uh, took them three hours. There were some people saying yeah. it took them three days to do it. Um, but anyway, it's also different depending on like you can beat the game with like certain a bit with without certain abilities or without certain yeah. like missile tanks or or, or, or health yeah. tanks or whatever. I've seen a lot of like three hour times like mm -hmm. on Twitter and stuff. People beating this game in like three hours, which means you didn't you definitely didn't get all the abilities and power ups you need. Yeah. So uh, you you kind of got to be a little careful. Like you want to make sure like you have a lot of the stuff you need to fight Ravenbeak. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, I, 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 I the game's kind of good at leading you along, so you should have most of what you need by the time you get to Raven Peak. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it 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 felt really good. You use basically all of your abilities to fight him. It's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty freaking cool. Um, so yeah, I liked that a lot. What about the rest of the game, Will? <laughs> we're spending a lot of time talking about raven beak but there is a whole game before that i mean the rest of the game is top notch it mm. is definitely the best game i've played all year it is one of the best games on switch it's i would go as far as say one of the best games of the generation it's just so good at what it does that i really like i really do have a hard time finding fault with it so, so uh, it is. It is. I think it's my game of the year. I'm having a hard time finding another game. Although Cyber Shadow came out this year, it was in January, mm. but it did come out this year. Right. Cyber Shadow is kind of up there. I also think Cyber Shadow is a game. Uh, if 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 you liked the challenge of this game, oh boy, you should check out Cyber Shadow. It, Cyber Shadow is a good example. The game is too hard. I stopped playing. It. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, I would say Metroid Dread is probably my game of the year. Um, I, I there's it's it's not perfect in my eyes. I mean, I don't love games that make you figure out where to go and there's a lot of backtracking and stuff. This game makes right. it really easy because like you'll get an ability and chances are you use that ability to figure out what to do next. Yeah, and the level design is so good that they kind of push you in a direction a little bit. Yeah. There's some little flaws, like uh, in some cases, like some things don't show up on the map where where you need to go, or like, uh, yeah. or or you have that little scan ability where you can scan uh, uh, the terrain to see what blocks you can destroy and whatnot. Uh, but yeah. sometimes it doesn't like do a good enough job. Um, but uh, the, the for the most part, the game does a pretty decent job of like pushing you in the right direction. Once the map gets pretty big, it does get a little hard to figure out. Like uh, there, there was one part where I was running around with, with like a chicken with my head cut off for, for a while. But uh, right after that part, once I figured that out, cause the, cause the map got so big, I was like, I don't I have no fucking idea where I'm going. Yeah. But once I figured that out, the rest of it just felt like they were just, they were just pushing me along. Um, yeah. The only problem is if you're playing like alone without a guide or anything, you might miss, you you might just walk past one of the blocks that you need to destroy with the ability yeah. you just got and not realize it until you come back. Um, also, some of the like the tank power ups and the missile power ups to to get them, you have to master like the dash and the shine spark ability, mm -hmm. and like some of the tricks they want you to pull off are like impossible. They want you to like start it in one room then like mm -hmm. save it in the next room and then like quickly go to the spot where you have to boost through a wall and like i just don't see how they expect a human being to do that so that's the completionist difficulty stuff like like yeah the game has a i think a pretty fair but fun uh, uh difficulty even all the way yeah. up until the end but if you want to complete it if you want 100 percent it you're gonna have to do some wacky shit um yeah and there is some there is some weirdness to some of the abilities like uh like the double jump is weird like yeah. you you have to be on the up you have to be spinning first of all and in order to spin you have to be like running slightly and jump yeah you have to be you have to be moving in you have to be to in motion just to be spinning so you have to yeah. jump while in motion 
And then you have to tap jump again while you're on the upswing, which is never yeah. how double jumps in games work. <laughs> it's usually, usually just do it either at the peak or, or, or when you're slightly coming down, like as a, as a little yeah. second jump. But if you're slightly coming down, you can't, it just won't let you jump again. Uh, which gets will, really annoying when you're in like boss fights and stuff. I will say, having played Mitch, Super Metroid before this, um, the double jumping and the wall jumping in Dread are a thousand times better than they were in Super Metroid. Hmm. Because that game, in Super Metroid, if your rhythm was off in like the jumping, like forget it. You'll, you, you'll just fall right to the floor. And it'll take you forever to get back up again. And I still don't know how wall jumping works in Super Metroid. <laughs> and I needed to use it to beat the game. So at least in this, in Dread, it works like every other game with wall jumping in it. Yeah, I don't like how, I don't like when games are like this. So we've always done it. So people who like Metroid are going to be mad if we change it. No, just make yeah. it how it works in modern yeah. games. Don't You don't have to yeah. stick with that. And they did. They did. They definitely fixed it. I can confirm <laughs> that. Um, so there's, there is weird little things that are preventing it from being like a, like a perfect 10 out of 10 game for me. Yeah. Uh, but I think the rest of it makes up for it. The level design is great. The way it pushes you towards yeah. stuff that you need to do, the, the way it makes you feel more and more and more powerful. Every single time you get an item, you're like, I'm a God now. And then you get another item yeah. and you're like, I'm a God now again. <laughs> and, and the, the, the the difficulty of of the of the bosses and the enemies ramps up with you kind of and uh the boss fights are really good and and really uh uh they're they're challenging but i think they're pretty fair um and, and another concern people have is that this is a uh we're going to get into this argument again this oh, is a uh a 3D game that is this is a 3D this is a game with 3D graphics that is played in two dimensions yes and uh, people think that that's not worth a full $60 I remember seeing a tweet from somebody who said like this is Nintendo $60 game and then this is Sony $60 game and it was Metroid Dread compared to God of War the most recent God of War. And I, I wanted to respond. I, I wanted to respond with this is Nintendo $60 game. This is Sony $60 game with Smash Brothers Ultimate and PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. <laughs> That's a good point. Because what are you trying what are you trying to say? What are you trying to prove here? Yeah. You know, it, it the, the point is like yeah, it, it's exp both sixty dollars is expensive for a game, in, re irregardless. But it, you know, it's not about the visuals on screen; more so the experience you have playing it. And I think that both Metroid Dread and God of War are worth sixty dollars. But you know, Metroid what it lacks in visual fidelity more than makes up for in pure raw gameplay. In you know just fundamentally the way you have to think in order to play the game and like just overall the sense of like isolation and dread that you get from the game. It, it, I mean, I hate the argument of comparing to full priced games because like yeah. games very, the price is just a standard price and yeah. the, the amount of uh, uh, what you get out of it varies wildly across yeah. the across the the board so you can compare breath of the wild to some garbage ass sony game and be like yeah six dollar game versus six dollar game what's up dude and it's 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 you know it's just the way you you phrase it so i mean comparing smash brothers to playstation all-stars is pretty <laughs> it's pretty good um but uh, hey they compared metroid to to god of war I like Metroid way more than I liked God of War. I'm having a much better yeah. time with Metroid than I yeah. do with God of War. And I liked God of War, but like Metroid is such a much better game. I, I like I liked God of War. I mean, I didn't really like it. I thought it was okay. <laughs> but uh it's just like it's it's this like epic like it, God of War is this e grand epic game. It's this like it it it's it's this technical marvel. It's supposed to look like real life, and it is really gorgeous and beautiful and yeah. stuff. But at the core of it, 
it's just mash the X button until the enemy does something and then parry it. That's the whole fucking game. And you got well, all these other even, abilities and stuff, but they are, they all boil down to that. It's not even mash the X button. It's mash the right trigger. <laughs> That's it's true. Just, Forgot about that. I, I, I must remind people that God of War is a melee game that uses third-person shooter mechanics and design for its combat. Mm -hmm. So that's a flaw. So if we're gonna boil it down to that to to its to its like mechanics, I mean, Metroid's got a very similar thing going on. So what do you mean? Where where? Well, I'm talking about how it's just mash the attack button until the enemy does something and then you just parry it. Right. Metroid's got a very similar uh, mechanic there. So like, yes, you look, it, it it's, it's this, it video games are largely very similar aside from a little gloss you have on the top. You could, if you can yeah. boil it down to its fucking gameplay mechanics. So if you really care about the nice cinematic, uh, uh, graphics and the, and, and the, the technical detail then sure only buy playstation first party stuff <laughs> but uh i think there's uh there's a lot more fun to be had in in a in a game that is just that just has really well designed levels and and, yeah. and uh uh is just f it has a great gameplay loop and is just fun to play from start to finish um mm -hmm. Bob's take Animal Crossing update was a coffee shop and God of War is a button masher beat em up. <laughs> yeah. Say, listen, that's the same reason why I was like, I don't need to play the Animal Crossing update because I just saw it on a stream and I was like, that's yeah. all I wanted to do was just see what the Brewster was like. And now I feel like I don't need the, the update. I mean, God of War has always been a button masher beat em up. Even mm -hmm. the original PS2 games were essentially that. You know, if if anything, then that's the part of the lineage the new God of War decided to take. <laughs> Circa in the chest says, God of War is 10 times better than Metroid to me. This is all subjective. You're right. It is very subjective. It is. Not everybody is. likes side-scrollers. And uh, that's where a lot of the people's concern is when they say, like, um, uh, $60 for a, for a 2D game or a side-scroller? That's yeah. bullshit. But no, there's a lot of depth in side scrollers. I mean, the depth is yeah. only vertical, uh, only horizontal, but uh, there is a lot of depth. Well, in a game like Metroid, though, the depth isn't necessarily <laughs> horizontal because they add, you know, the vertical aspect. I was making so a fucking up, like and... joke about like uh, about. I was making a pun. Oh, you, you were trying to be like an idiot. <laughs> yes, I was trying to be stupid. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of depth in a game like Metroid because uh, uh, there's there's uh, there's a, a lot that you can do in it, even though you're only going uh, vertical and horizontal. How about that? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, it it utilizes every single button on the controller. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost to its detriment. <laughs> I don't know about the right stick though. I don't think it uses the right stick at all. I think you click it for. You, for cloaking. Oh, you, you do. Know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't use the entire D-pad. No, it only uses like the right D-pad right for but some reason. It probably should have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> instead know, of the like, instead of the stick clicks, it should have done that. There is the that's a that's another thing keeping it from being a uh, ten out of ten. The the controller layout is weird. Yeah. It's yeah. it's better than what is in Super Metroid because I had to remap the buttons to Super Metroid. But yeah, it, like to know all the button combinations, like that can be a problem, especially during the heat of battle. And uh, it's better than it was in uh, Samus Returns. Also, Samus Returns had some weird yeah. shit going on. Uh, the Zama says, "Can't you move with the D-pad?" No, no. Uh, but 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 you don't really want to because uh, yeah. aiming the aiming the uh, aiming your arm cannon, uh, you you want the full three sixty degrees of movement with the with the left stick. Yeah, so it makes a little sense. Um, but there is a lot of, like you use like all of the shoulder buttons and, and yeah. some of them feel like they're, they're uh, misplaced or, or things just shouldn't work the way that they do. Like, yeah. like some certain charge, certain things are charge shots when, when they really shouldn't be. Uh, that's yeah. how at least I feel with it. It's a little weird, but, uh, once you get into the groove of it, you figure out what every button does. Uh, uh, 
you you feel like you can flow really good and it all comes to a culmination when you fight freaking Ravenbeak at the end and have to use yeah. every single move really fast mm-hmm. um so yeah i i don't want, it's easy to talk about the negatives of the game uh but uh and we're talking about it a lot but we we do really love it and it's uh it it, it earned the 9 at least for me um yeah Anyway, uh, we got Gambitwise who says, so what games should I buy like Metroid Dread? Sorry, boys, came in late. Love you guys. Uh, that's totally fine. We didn't even get there yet. Um, yep. We did title this thing something about uh, recommendations because I played it and I was like, so like, I love 2D games. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. I love side-scrolling games, Okay. 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 Uh, and Metroid Dread is like the most popular one that's that's been out in a really long time besides freaking Mario. Yeah. Um. So I'm really excited that everybody's like uh, getting on this bandwagon. Everybody's like excited for for this type of game. So and and pl- after playing it, I was like, there's a shit ton of games that are just like this that everybody's oh, missing yeah. out on because they just aren't a fan of the genre. Um. And who do and who do things very similarly just as well. Uh, yeah. People in the chat are saying Hollow Knight. People love Hollow Knight. I didn't love Hollow Knight. <laughs> Hollow Knight is very good, and you should play it. Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania in the sense that uh, there's a big wide map, and uh, you have to get abilities and and run around and backtrack a lot to figure out what to do and where to go. I don't think Hollow Knight did as good of a job at telling you or put leading you or pushing you towards what to do and where to go as well as a game like Metroid did. Yeah. But it is still a very good game. Um so you should check out Hollow Knight, especially if you can get it on a deal because it's an indie game, it's pretty cheap. Uh and uh it's usually on sale and uh it would be great if that had a demo. Yeah. Um, have you played Gato Roboto? No, but I believe no. that's the same guy who did uh, Downwell. And I kind of want... Oh, so. it's a Metroidvania? I didn't know that. So, there's a lot... Like, like I don't really like Metroidvania games. I, the only Metroidvania <laughs> games I like are Metroid and Castlevania. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because not every Castlevania game is a Metroidvania. Mm. And... The, the Vania parts that they added were like RPG elements, like stats and things like that. Mm-hmm. So not every Metroidvania game does that. Um, if you want to play Castlevania games that are Metroidvanias, they just released the GBA collection on Switch and other platforms. That gives you uh, Circle of the Moon, of Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow. Those are considered to be the best games from the Game Boy Advance generation. Uh, I would recommend that if you want to try something a little different, a little harder than I would say Metroid. So yeah, we got these around the same time. Which one did we have for the yeah. for the GBA? We we had um, Circle of the Moon. So I didn't. Uh, I that's the only ga- Castlevania game I've ever played. And and uh, yeah. again, I'm not really down with games like this, but for whatever reason, I loved Metroid Fusion and I loved uh, Circle of the Moon uh, when we played it. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, uh, when I said that there was a lot of very similar games that people would love, uh, I wasn't referring at all to the to the Metroidvania style mechanics in in, in Metroid <laughs> Dread. I was referring more to the uh, the the, the two dimensional action combat and all oh, and all that okay. shit. Um, what is there? I, I I was drawing a lot of parallels between uh, uh, the, the boss fights in Metroid Dread. And fucking Mega Man Zero. Mega Man Zero is insanely hard, though. It gets really hard once you get once you get yeah. into it. I mean, there's some weird stuff in Met- in Mega Man Zero. Like, uh, you can just fail a mission and then keep playing it. Like, like yeah. if you, if you if you lose all your lives on a mission, it'll be like, don't worry about it. Just play the next one, and it'll just make you keep going. But the story changes if you do that. Yeah. Um. So it can kind of be a easy, I guess. Um or easier but uh the boss fights are really 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 good and and they're a similar kind of you got to learn this pattern another one um the first azure striker gun vault the levels design is not great 
but the boss fights are awesome and they again make yeah. me feel very similarly to the way it was in in dread except you don't really get a lot of abilities to like cycle between yeah. um anyway uh, uh well the thing is like when people say metroidvania they're referring not so much to the combat of it but rather right. the fact that it's not even that it's side scrolling but that the fact that there's this like open world you can explore but you explore it by not having access to the entire area all at once you gain right. more access to the to the area by adventuring and gaining new abilities and learning new tricks and eventually you can explore the whole map um at your leisure and the more you know weapons and items and experience you get the better and better you are equipped at facing the final boss at the end a game that not many people think not not many people realize is a metroidvania game but 100 you know, is uh is batman arkham asylum oh. that game is just straight up a metroidvania because you have you know you're planted at arkham you have access to one of the buildings at first but then as the game goes on and as you get more and more of your gadgets, you get access to the, you know, the greenhouse, the penitentiary, the warden's office, the rest of the island, your bat cave until, until finally you get all your gadgets back and you can fight the Joker at the end. You know, so if you can play the original Arkham Asylum, that is 100 percent a Metroidvania game and it's a great Metroidvania game. I, are, are people in the chat really like it, it, so there's people here that have played metroid dread and they're probably looking for a new game to play that's very similar are any yeah. of you like man i really love just walking around and trying to unlock new areas is that like the thing that got you really jazzed about metroid dread <laughs> that's like the last thing on my mind like gee golly i need another game no. where i can just unlock doors <laughs> when you put it like that it makes it sound <laughs> And boring but no part of the appeal of a metroidvania is the exploration of right it. people like you know games where you can explore so so so, so the last metroidvania game that made me game, the last game that made me feel good doing stuff like that is like resident evil like when you get a key and you're like oh this opens the store and then you open the door and you're in this whole new area that's like really vast and crazy yeah. looking like that's then i'm like oh, okay it's cool i like walking around this world um, but a lot of the, I mean, I always like, I always like the shit on Ocarina of Time, but, uh, a lot of the reason why we didn't really fall in love with Ocarina of Time when it came out was because we just didn't really care about the world. And, and like, you really yeah. need to care about the world to be able to like want to wander around it for a really long time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that aspect of a Metroidvania is pretty cool. Um, but again, I, I like to, I was drawing a lot of parallels between a lot of the mechanics in, in, in Metroid right. and, and how people would yeah. uh, people would like that sort of shit. But no, you're right. Arkham Asylum has, has a lot of uh, Metroidvania yeah. style mechanics. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because with a Metroidvania, it's about exploration, but it's exploration through action, whereas a game like Ocarina of Time, you know, it's not as... It, there's action in it, but it's not as action-focused. You know, mm -hmm. you can... You go more at your leisure... Whereas in a game like Dread or Arkham or, you know, the Castlevania games, there's a sense of urgency to what you do where you have to, where you feel like you have to go through, you, ha you have to go through quickly and you have to be ready to fight in a moment's notice. Uh, Milica's Cruel said, Dread was the worst Metroid when it comes to backtracking and exploration. You know what I really liked about Metroid Dread? When you get it, when you go through an area and you get a new ability very close to where you got the new ability there will be a teleporter to an they would to an area you were just in to like backtrack yeah. but now you can get into all areas you can get into new areas in yeah. that certain area so like the game sort of gently pushes you like look here's the teleporter and now you're back to where you were but now try that new ability oh look now yeah. you can do all this stuff so like so like the it it wasn't so bad i, I feel like i feel like the backtracking wasn't yeah. really that big of a deal also, it's very good at as you get more powerful, going through previous levels is a breeze because mm. you just, you know, pretty much every enemy succumbs to your standard shooter by that point. Right. 
So you can just like run through a run through a level just shooting everything and they all just die. As opposed to some other games of a similar nature where, you know, if you have to go through another enemy infested room, you got to go through the whole combat cycle again. And that's not fun. Are you referring to a specific game? Uh, no, I just I thought you were trying to shit one. on one game in particular. <laughs> No, I'm not. I just I, I know that there are certain types of games, certain types of Metroidvanias that I have played where you ha- where you have to go through the whole combat cycle again when you go through, you know, rooms you've previously visited and you don't want to do that. You just yeah, want to yeah. go through because you're just passing by. Yeah, they make it a lot easier. As you get more powerful, I mean, it becomes really easy to just breeze through yeah. certain areas. You, you sometimes you just want to you just want to run through it like, "Oh, I don't want to I just wanted to be here for 2 seconds." Exactly. Um when I say that the game's a nine out of ten, I, I'm mostly talking about how that's what I mean when the level design is great because they, they yeah. part of the level design is is kind of guiding you towards what you what you need to do. Um. Anyway, people in the chat were talking about Salt and Sanctuary. I've never played it, uh, but I do. I have heard a lot of great things about it. I have heard that's a good one. I've heard it's very. I've heard it's the Dark Souls of Metroid Prime. Metroid. Uh, Vania games. I keep getting this confused with Blasphemous. Blasphemous is no, another one that's like Dark Souls. Yeah. It looks kind of similar though. Yeah. How do you spell Blasphemous? Uh, B L A. I got it. I got it. P A. Google, yeah. help me out. Blasphemous is pretty looking. It's very gory. Lots of blood. Uh, did I? Oh, I am. I do know this game. Yeah, I'd like to try this out. Yeah. I might have a lot of fun with this one. Uh, Is there someone in the chat say uh, Jedi Fallen Order? That's, yes, it's a Metroidvania, but it's also like every other game in existence. <laughs> It has Dark Souls elements. It has Uncharted elements. It's got all these other elements in there. Um, Metroidvania is like, I feel like a fraction of like the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Somebody in the chat way earlier said, is, is Metroid Dread harder than The Messenger? I never actually beat The Messenger. Neither did I. I got the really messenger- far and I just, I just stopped yeah. playing for some reason. I think I stopped playing because it got too hard. <laughs> the messenger is more of like platform focus instead of there's combat mm-hmm. in it, but like your biggest enemy is platforming. So, and if you screw up in platforming, it is your fault. Right. There's, there's no two ways around it. So you have to get good at the platforming. And if you're not good at the platforming, you're not going to enjoy it. Um, that said, I don't, like it is technically a Metroidvania, but I always felt it more like the backtracking and exploration was secondary to taking you on this strictly linear story that it's trying to tell. Uh, Jinx in the chat, who just gave us another shit ton of money, which we'll talk about when we get to the notifications. Uh, she, they, they say, uh, what platform is the messenger? Is it an indie? I believe it's on everything. Yes, it's, it's on an everything. indie. It might yeah. be on Game Pass. I, I mean, Cyber Shadow was on Game Pass for a really long time. The Messenger is very, very good. It is also very, very hard. And yeah. it's, I'm sure if I tried to play it now, I would have no idea what I was doing. I see. That's that's. I feel like it's like I want to finish it, but I feel like I'm. I have to do the whole game over again. Like I feel like I'm way too far gone to be able to uh, to yeah. play it now. Um, the Messenger Xbox. Uh, I just want to see if it's free on Game Pass. It don't look like it is. So sorry. Oh, wait, this one says free. Oh, it's an add-on. Uh, yeah, I wonder why I stopped playing it. I think, I, I don't know. Uh, but but why did I finish Cyber Shadow and not The Messenger? They're very similar games. And I think yeah. Cyber Shadow might be harder. Oh, Cyber Shadow is definitely harder. I don't know what made Cyber me Shadow. want to finish Cyber Shadow and not the Messenger. Like I got, I got a decent chunk into the Messenger. I couldn't get past the first level of Cyber Shadow. <laughs> couldn't get past the first level. <laughs> the game is unfair. 
It is unfair. It is poorly designed. I, no, it it's very good. Cyber Shadow is very, very good. I love it. It's one of it was my game of the year until friggin' uh, yesterday. <laughs> um, I think a Mario game or something else came out towards the end of the Messenger hype. When did the Messenger come out? It came out a while ago. Uh, August thirtieth, twenty eighteen. Wait. When did Mario Maker come out? 2019. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because we went to E3 and I was disappointed I couldn't play it. Yeah. The first E3 I ever went to had the first Mario Maker at it. Oh. I think. Uh, anyway, Cyber Shadow is a linear platformer and it's pretty short. When Messenger opens up, there's more backtracking involved. Uh, I don't know if I ever got to any backtracking stuff in the messenger. Uh, I think that might come later in the game. So should I check out Cyber Shadow after Dread? It was also something that interested me while you were streaming it, but I turned off at the time because it looked like Metroid and I'd never played slash been interested in Metroid. It's interesting that you think it looked like Metroid. Um, yeah. I probably pulled the boss baby uh, 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 line on you for saying I when I was when I played Cyber Shadow every single this is what what started the whole thing every yeah. when I was playing the Cyber Shadow people would come into the chat and be like this looks like Metroid or this looks like uh this looks like Zelda like the original Zelda yeah. or oh this looks like a uh, uh, goof troop like they would just say <laughs> they would just say NES games because it looks like an yeah. NES game um anyway uh cyber shadow is free on game pass i believe if uh, it's part of game pass so if you have game pass on xbox you can give cyber shadow a try uh again cyber shadow is very difficult um but i think you if you liked dread for its boss fights and uh and if, if you want a more linear experience cyber shadow is very very good and can get you there right but again it's harder than dread so yeah you gotta, you gotta get in that mindset. Imagine the last boss, but that's all the bosses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I mean, again, the last boss in Dread is that way because of how long it takes. Yeah. Uh, By that point, you should have everything you need to beat him easily. Yeah, that's not really the, how the difficulty works in games like Cyber Shadow or like or like Mega Man yeah. Zero, like I was talking about before. That it's just you have to learn the patterns of the bosses, and it gets pretty hard. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I definitely recommend Cyber Shadow uh, and Mega Man Zero. Everybody should play Mega Man Zero. Uh, you, can, you could get it on your computer if you're savvy enough. Yeah. I don't promote <laughs> anything but getting it on the eShop, but I mean, just to let you know what's out there. I only like Dread because I love a game with a strong male lead, says Trouble. You should play the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh, I think I think that's uh, what well, final thoughts on Metroid Dread. What do you rate it? I've been saying nine out of ten. What do you think? I would say nine out of ten as well. I think Wolf it Den is... official seal yeah. on Metroid Dread is nine out of ten. It's, it's fantastic. I think everybody should play it. I think I, I honestly think it is one of the best games on Switch. Possibly yes. one of the best games of the generation. Luabic asks next question: Should I watch Boss Baby? Yes. <laughs> Uh, although it depends on your thoughts on what's his face. Oh, Alec Baldwin. No, no, the boss well, he baby. He plays the boss baby. No, yeah, he plays boss baby. Yeah. No, I thought it was the other guy that that uh, that is a pedophile. Oh no! Who? Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Oh my god, Alec Baldwin does it. I didn't know it was ba yeah, Alec uh, Baldwin. Boss baby. I thought it was yeah. that fucking other guy. Kevin Spacey. I thought it was Kevin Spacey. Oh. No, that's that's much worse. No, it's it's Alec Baldwin. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I get I don't know. Watch Boss Baby. I'm sure it's great. That you can compare everything you've ever seen in your life to Boss <laughs> Baby. Um anyway, notifications. We're behind by a lot. Yeah. Jinx yeah. over here giving us all their life savings. 
Thank you yeah. for the tw- uh, for the twenty five gifted, then another twenty five gifted, and then for five thousand bits. Thank you very much, Jinx. You don't have to do I this. Hope, I hope you'll be able to eat this this uh, month. Yeah, please save the money for yourself, please. But yeah. I appreciate it. Um, Kikoba with twenty four months, two years. What a trip! In the end, it was the air fryers we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Coco uh, Baby uh, with the four months. Thanks for the podcast. Billy Bob. Thank you very much. You're very well. I, Ray, speaking of the air fryer, I busted out my food processor for the first time. You got like, too many in, in, the fi- in the five years that I've had the fucking thing, I finally started using it. Uh, I got I to gotta find ways to use it more. That thing is amazing. You what? just throw everything in there, you press the button, and it just chops it all up for you. It... it is it a juicer or is it a chopper? It just chops it's it. It's a chopper. It, it's a. It's more of a chopper. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. You got too many things. I do. Like I I'm a, gonna get all. Like I gotta chop something. I'm gonna get a whole appliance out of the listen, out of the cabinet and plug it in. Cali- if you gotta make cauliflower rice, then using your knife <laughs> is not gonna cut it. You just. I just gotta make cauliflower rice. <laughs> Oh, boy, everybody out of the way. I just got to make this cauliflower rice. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I made it. Anyway, <laughs> this, is how, this is how little I make food. Um, Where am I? Uh, Random heart with the eight months. The mummy demastered is so fucking good. What? I've heard that's very good. And that's very funny because the mummy demastered is a movie tie in to the Tom Cruise mummy movie. (laughs) And that movie is hot garbage. I wonder like who approved this. I I think way forward made it and they they're usually pretty good at like those type of games. So it's pretty good. I know. So, so it's on sale. Maybe I'll buy it. This reminds me of uh, Dark Void. Yes, they made a remake of the game. Dark Void got bad reviews, but they made a remake yeah. of the game, and that got really good reviews. Yeah, it was like a promotional thing for the game Dark Void, and the promotional thing did better than the actual game. Yeah, um, and that was sick. I kind of want to try that. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, we got Sandro Horta with the four months. Sup, Wolf Bros. Sorry, I'm late, but after the screen of my Switch Lite die, you give me inspiration to buy another one and replace it. And I did. And it's working fine. You guys are the best. P.S. I'm really enjoying Scootish streams. Help me. I can't help you there, bro. Yeah, you're, you're, you're on, on your own, own with that. Uh, there's, uh, there are support groups uh, over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. Uh, but uh, yeah. I, we can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got Migs Luna with 16 months. And we got Jinx with another 500 bits. Thank you very much. And we got Dingo on my 40 with four months who says hi. Hello. Hello. Appreciate it, everybody. Uh, now we can move on to all the other topics of the week. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I put this one first. We're going to move this. Oh, we didn't do the Spotify poll. Oh, that's right. We started doing that. Oh, let's talk about the Spotify poll real quick while yes. I move this to- topic to somewhere else. So last week's poll over on, if you listen to us on Spotify, you might have seen us, uh, you might have seen the poll for last week's episode, which was, what was the single best year for gaming? And at 34%, you voted for 2004. So you agree with me. I think I also agree. I think that was the consensus of us. Yeah, I think because like you said, like I, I, I said ninety eight. Yeah. yeah, which was in second place with twenty six percent, and then I think I turned you into on two thousand and four. Right. Um. But then in third place was two thousand and seven, and then right behind that was two thousand and ten. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've I've seen like at the very bottom of the list is. Uh, 94 and 87. So definitely got a younger skew in audience in this uh, in this show. 
Now, I did a little poll of my own over on Twitter.com oh, slash Bob Wolf uh, uh, right after the show because I was just a little curious. Uh, I said, is 3D, sky- is 3D side scroller a genre or are side scrollers considered 2D games? And I am shocked and appalled by all of you heathens. The first answer was 3D side scrollers with just 14.4%. So 3D side scroller, which is what I've been the term I've been using, is apparently not a term to the general public. You're all fucking stupid. I'm the smart one. Side scrollers are 2D is the second answer. That has 34.5%. 34.5% of people. 30 so hold on. Let me back up. 2147 people voted. 34% of that think that side scrollers all of them are 2D. Yes. <laughs> There's that many dumb people around. So then the because. final one, but the even which is it gets worse. The final one is it's called 2.5D and 51.1% of people think that oh. it's called 2.5D. That's over a thousand people on this godforsaken earth think that 2.5D is a fucking thing. So that's that's one of two things. One, and I think this is the most likely one. People, it's people trolling you, <laughs> but straight but up. I, I don't know about that because because or, the way I worded it, uh, mo- there weren't that many people that watched the podcast. Or two, people have been brainwashed into think into thinking that two point five D is the accepted terminology. That's. That's or what it is. Side scroller with 3D graphics. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's that one. <laughs> but but there were some good answers that almost turned me. Um uh I don't want to go through these and find them. But uh but one of them broke it down and was like, "Look, there's they could be 3D in graphics and 2D in gameplay." And I was like, "You know what? I'll accept yeah. that." I guess if you put those two terms together, it becomes the average is 2.5. That I won't allow. <laughs> so I, 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 that's why in the beginning of the, of the podcast, I said that. I said it's a 3D graph. It's got 3D graphics, but you move in two dimensions. But isn't that what they thought? Isn't that what drove me crazy in the first place? There was an article that said the 2D fighting. No, no, the 3D looking, 2D fighting, yeah. fighting game, and I was yes. like, "What is? What did they just and say I to me?" To, and I was trying to explain to you how a game can have 3D graphics, but because it operates on a two dimensional plane, that makes it a 2D game. Yeah, I, 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 I I'm, I'm, I'm choking on my words. Side scroller. I feel like people don't know that's a genre. Yeah, a side scroller implies that it goes from side to side right. across a two-dimensional plane. But then if the graphics are 3D... Oh, wait. The the, the jump from... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on sorry. The no, jump we, from single-screen or flip-screen graphics... What? Hold on. Let me just read this whole thing on this Wikipedia article. A side-scrolling video game, sometimes shortened to side-scroller, is a game in which the action is viewed from a side-view camera angle, and the screen follows the player as they move left or right. The jump from single-screen or flip-screen graphics to scrolling graphics during the golden age of video games... uh, what video arcade games was a pivotal leap in game design comparable to the move to 3d graphics during the fifth generation okay that makes that actually makes sense because back in like the atari days uh, there were like games like et where you just move the screen just single screen yeah it was single screen yes um anyway uh yeah i feel like we're not using the term side scroller enough that that solves a lot (laughs) anyway I'm done being mad. No, I'm not. You can't. Shut up. I'm making that a topic in the list. Oh, uh, another side-scrolling rant? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway. Hey, there's a new Nintendo console coming out. Can you believe it? Oh, boy. When is it coming out? Bet you done never seen this. 20XX, like this is Mega Man. 
Uh, anyway, this, The Verge says the Nintendo Switch with an OLED screen isn't even a month old, but the company is already talking about some kind of successor to its wildly popular console handheld hybrid, although vaguely. In a presentation to investors, Nintendo hints towards some of its plans in an extremely specific way. The plan, the company plans to continue to expand it. The company plans to choking on that rage. The company plans to quote continue to expand its business around the core concept of creating unique integrated hardware software products. Hardware dash software. The most, the most uh, friggin' uh, uh, corporate way of saying nothing. <laughs> Which I'm taking to mean that the company will brace yourself, make more video games and video game hardware in the future. On the side, which you can see your, on the... S- on the slide, which you can see for yourself on page 41 of this PDF, Nintendo also has a timeline of some of its hardware efforts and specifically includes its, quote, next gaming system slated to release at an un- undefined 20XX date. So sometime between now and 2099, I guess. there are. So that's 79 years. Yes. There are no, or 78 years, there are no hints as to what the hardware might look like if it will be another hybrid like the Switch or even just another revision of the Switch. The only image Nintendo includes is a question mark. Here it is. Integrated hardware, software, next gaming system, 20XX. That's all I have to say about this article. Um, okay. I mean, no, duh, Nintendo's working on another system. Mm-hmm. Every video game company works on another system once their, you know, previous system gets out the door. You know, it's just a matter of R and D, of uh, refining it, trying to figure out exactly what they want to do, and then they show it off to the world. I'm gonna be honest. It's not I kinda, news. I kind of hope that they take a long time. I kind of hope that they that they that the switch, the current switch, is here for a while. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like it could last a really long time. And we got all of our games on it. Uh, the library is just building and building. It's, getting, it's becoming a better and better system. I know people are really itching for that 4K. But are they really? Or is it just a vocal pe- amount of people who just want to, to complain? I mean, the Switch has shown that it can do a lot with a little since 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's going to come a point where it is going to be too far behind the curve in order to like to keep up with not just Sony and Microsoft, but just technology in general, you know, Mm -hmm. there's going to come a point where they have to evolve the system, not just for the customers, but for themselves. Right. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. No, I, I I still speculate Uh, not next year, maybe the year after. We'll get we'll get a brand new generation from Nintendo, uh, but I I wouldn't mind if they if they stick it out for a really long time. As somebody who could benefit greatly from a new hardware release from Nintendo, <laughs> I think that they could they could chill for a little bit. I feel like they're I mean yeah. sales are sales sales aren't really down right now. I don't think I think it's just they were surpassed by Sony, so um, yeah. uh, they're no longer on top. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we have to, I don't think we have to worry. Nintendo's working on something. They, at least yeah. they finally acknowledged that something's happening. Um, but anyway, any notifications? No. Chris BX says, I only pay attention to rampant speculation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to cite a source there, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, Sakurai is also gonna fucking keep doing shit yeah masahiro sakurai is back in famitsu with his final column which he pontificates about super smash brothers ultimate as the series potential finale it actually sounds like ultimate might not be the end though sakurai isn't certain about a sequel just yet in excerpts published by rio kyoto 2089 translated by both silicon era and video games chronicle the producer talked about the future of Smash Brothers. Sakurai said that while he isn't thinking about a follow-up, he can't say with any certainty that Ultimate is the end of Smash. 
Apparently, he and Nintendo need to discuss and seriously consider how a sequel could be a success considering Ultimate has been the best has been a bestseller for the company since launch. If another Smash Brothers were to come, Sakurai said it probably couldn't be done without him. In conjunction with his final column, Famitsu interviewed Sakurai, who said that he currently doesn't see a path in which Smash can exist without his involvement. He even mentioned Nintendo attempted to hand it off to someone else, but it didn't go well, whatever that might mean. Ooh. I'm curious as to I want to know that, that story, yeah. <laughs> well, ha- weren't like the last two or three Smash Brothers games actually co-developed with Bandai? Yes. So they probably tried to give it to them completely, and something got screwed up, so Sakurai's like, all right, I'll, I'll fucking fix it. Um... Yeah, I feel like this new one was kind of based off of the last one, uh, oh, which is totally was. fine. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I can't imagine anybody having the same sort of passion that Sakurai has and the same sort of like... Oh God, uh, like, Sakurai like, puts himself in the hospital yeah. during the development of all of these games. There's so like there's so much in Smash Brothers. It, it might be... Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I have a hard time thinking of a $60 game with the same amount of content in it. Like Call yeah. of Duty, Call of Duty has some some of the Call of Duty games, even though they've released one every year, has like an insane amount of shit in it. You got the main yeah. campaign, you got the multiplayer, you got zombies, you got Warzone wrapped into it. So like maybe that, but I mean, yeah. still, there's so much you could do in Smash Brothers, uh, oh, and there's so yeah, many absolutely. characters, and they all have to be balanced. Yeah. Like like. There's a lot of attention to detail in Smash Bros. And we all saw that attention. What could happen if there is no attention to detail with a game like Nicktoons All-Star Brawl, which yeah. is a Smash clone that lacks the attention to detail and it suffers very hard for it. Um. Anyway, yeah, I can't imagine a Smash game without Sakurai, but I mean, it's going to have to happen eventually. Yeah. Um, if they're worried about the game doing well. I mean, Smash Bros. is the highest selling fighting game of all time. Uh, yeah. But the, the I feel like the next one will only do poorly if it's on a system that does poorly. Yeah, I think... I mean, I don't know what the next Smash Brothers could possibly look like because right. they really didn't make this the ultimate Smash Brothers game. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, as, as Smash Brothers is by now an established popular franchise, as long as they put out another one that's vaguely similar to the others, I'm sure people will like like it and play it. You know? Yeah, I can't imagine them adding more characters. Like, what? Are they, I can't. No. I can't fathom. They would have to scale it back, maybe. And then what? Yeah. Then what do you I, do? I, I, there's no way that the next Smash Brothers game is going to be as big as this. I, I can definitely see them scaling it back. Maybe they just go back to doing Nintendo characters. Maybe, you know, it's less, it's less, uh, it doesn't have like the grand epic single player campaigns of like the previous Smash games. It is just a pure tournament fighter mm-hmm. or something. But, you know. Uh, ch- Chunky Lurvu. In the chat says maybe actually have some single player content this time. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that was lacking in Ultimate was a, a subspace emissary type thing. But that is, yeah. oh well, no, they had the uh, World of Light. Uh, yeah, which it, wasn't my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't love it either. I, I played a yeah. decent amount of it, and uh, I wasn't too jazzed. Uh, I used to honestly with all the Smash Brothers games, I used to just do the classic mode. I love doing the classic mode. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so uh, Sakurai's gonna have to pass the torch. He can't be, keep putting himself in the yeah. hospital. But again, I can't see anybody else willing to put themselves in the hospital for the, for the sake of Smash Brothers. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we got a new update for Super Mario 3D All Stars that adds controller support. Uh, this happened. Did this happen last week? Did this happen on the podcast? Yes. No, I think it happened after the podcast. Yeah, so this is a big deal because uh, I wanted, I just wanted to briefly mention this because um, when I tested the N64 controller, the official mm-hmm. Nintendo N64 controller for the Nintendo Switch, 
when I tested it with 3D All Stars and it worked just fine. Everything worked great. I was like, wow, I can't believe they they supported this controller. That's crazy. Right. Turns out the B button also jumped. The B button wasn't the punch button like it was supposed to be. So right. um so I just never pressed the B button, I guess, when I was testing it. Yeah. So uh they they fixed it. So now the B button punches. So that's really all that they they did, but it works now. Um I don't know why they didn't do that already, but whatever. So just a little clarification for 2 days the fr- the freaking <laughs> game didn't work right, but now it works right. So uh if you are interested at all in that N64 controller uh for any it, it basically is only going to be a good time for the N64 games and Nintendo Switch Online. And uh, now we know for certain that it works with 3D All Stars. Yeah. Um, also, it's kind of fun playing Smash with it because the the oh, C but the C buttons act as a, a right tri- uh, right stick, yeah. so you can do Smash attacks with the C buttons, and it's actually pretty freaking cool. Nice. Um, yeah, you just have to have tap jump on, and I know some people freak out when they have yeah. tap jump on. Anyway. I uh, just wanted to do that as a little PSA for you. Uh, next, we have Nintendo to continue to improve Switch Online. Wow. Nintendo said that it will continue to improve and expand on its Switch Online services as well as its recently released premium expansion pack, possibly in response to poor reception to its pricing and recent additions. As part of the latest corporate management briefing, Nintendo has stated that it will continue to improve and expand both Switch Online uh uh, Switch Online and Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack in order to provide services that satisfies its fan base. The pledge to improve comes shortly after the company experienced a rocky start to the launch of its premium Expansion Pack subscription service. <clears throat> the service, which last, which launched last month, adds a new membership tier to Switch Online that gives players access to an expanding catalog of N64 and Sega Genesis games as well as paid DLC, currently Animal Crossing Happy Horizon, uh, New Horizon Happy Home Paradise. Uh, following the release, um, Nintendo received backlash. Uh, people were experiencing issues with the game, complaints with the community. Uh, despite taking some criticism over the launch of the premium tier subscription service, how, however, elsewhere in the briefing, Nintendo announced that it has seen an overall increase in the number of players subscribed to Switch Online this past year. The publisher stated that the number of players accessing its online services has now exceeded 32 million, up from 6 million from this time last year. That's a lot of people. Yeah. So the subscription is working. They really have zero uh, reason to make it any better. Yeah. <laughs> people yeah. are already paying for it. I mean, they say <laughs> they're going to, which is nice, uh, but... When you add six million people to your subscription service, I mean, that's a good indication that you're doing something right, so, even so, if you're not doing something right. Right. So, so a lot of people view this. This is a weird thing. Like, 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 Nintendo's trying to add value to the subscription service by giving more content. They're not giving nearly as much as some other companies like Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, yeah. But they're giving some quality things that people that people are fans of that people really want. Um, so that's, a, that's their strategy. However, the general public or, or, or the, or the, the, the hardcore fans of Nintendo, uh, they're not going to get out of their mind that the Nintendo, that the online service of these, of a lot of games, a lot of Nintendo games runs like hot garbage and they're yeah. paying for switch online to, to mainly to play multiplayer games online with other people and the nintendo multiplayer is garbage on a lot of a lot of their games um yeah so you can add all as many games as you want you could fucking put gamecube games on there but people are still gonna hate nintendo switch online if the if the online is still gonna be bad for a lot of their first party games um i'm more than happy to have more more content with the nintendo switch online but they need to fix the the way that the freaking online works in general there's people uh, there's people arguing in my twitter mentions for some stupid reason about uh um uh playing n64 games with other people now i i did that i played it with wood and we had a uh, we didn't have any problems playing online with each other but right. we both have really good internet connections if you're playing with randos 
it might not go so well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that people have a right to be, uh, upset with how Nintendo Switch Online is. Uh, yeah. however, when I heard, when I saw improve and expand the online service, I was hoping to hear more about their, uh, um, they have a new like server infrastructure or something that they're working on, like, yeah. like a, like a new net code that they used for, uh, um, Monster, uh, Hunter. Monster Hunter and they might've used it for Mario Party. Although I'm mad at Mario Party because it kicked me yeah. out of the game, the second game that I played. <laughs> Somebody in chat before asked me if I, what I thought about Mario Party. Mario Party is a fucking garbage game, and it's always been a garbage game. And this one's no exception. It's still garbage. It's it's less garbage than the last Mario Party that came out, the mainline Mario Party. Yeah, but it's still garbage. Yeah, we are not fans of Mario Party here at the Wolf no. Town. <laughs> Don't like it. Um, that being said. If they release Mario Party on Nintendo Switch Online, I will play it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it bad? Because the game doesn't fucking matter, dude. Nothing matters in the game. You play the game and then nothing matters after, after the game. You win the whole time and then the game is like, oh, here's a star to the loser. Here's the loser star. He's mad because he's not good. Well, I get to, I get to, I get to, I get to time out Willow. Here we go. Let's fucking get the fuck out of my chat, you stupid bitch. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the test which online, I think it, the games are, uh, it, it's got its flaws, and I, I think that they yeah. know that the at least at least the, they know that the the public is is upset with the launch of the N64 games yeah. and, and and the service in general so at least they know they they that they they have some work to do um mm-hmm. i hope they focus on the right things though anyway what else do we have to talk about uh Nintendo's already revealed their black friday uh bundle oh boy howdy it's the same bundle they've been putting out year after year after year. <laughs> yeah, when did this bundle first show up? Was it 2018? It was like a really long time so. ago. Yeah. Um. So the Black Friday bundle for the Nintendo Switch will be the will be the base model Nintendo Switch. Uh, so not the OLED model. Uh, blue and red Joy Cons. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, and three months of. Nintendo Switch Online. Individual membership, specifically. Uh, uh, three months ain't that much. Ni- it'll all retail for two ninety nine ninety nine. I mean, I'm sure this will just get like just to dip people's toe in the water of Switch Online. They're right. not going to give you a whole year. I'm trying um, to I'm trying to find uh, the Black Friday ad from 2017 to see if that's in it. I don't know if it would be in 2017. No, because... I remember they had it... It was definitely 2018, and I think 2019, because that was the year of the improved battery life switch came uh, out, right? yes, you're right. You're right. So it came out that year, but that bundle was using the version one that didn't have the improved battery life. Yeah, they were trying to get rid of their old stock of the yeah. of the old ones. Uh, and then in 2020, they put in the the better battery life version for this bundle. So, so, so do we know? Oh wait, in 2020 they put in the improved battery life. Yeah. How do we know? I didn't never. I don't remember that. I think I because I think like they had to clarify. Okay. But, yeah. So, and I so think by then they they ran out of like version ones anyway. So this will probably be the improved battery life version. Yeah. This is that. This is the. This is the base model switch. This isn't the OLED switch. Right. Uh I mean most people who get a switch have Mario Kart. Uh and yes. a lot of people who are buying this for a family or something, they're going to want Mario Kart. So I think this is a good bundle. And Switch Online, you get to play Mario Kart with your uh with your friends. It would be great if they included the expansion pack though, then you get some N64 games. Yeah, if that ain't happening. Uh also of note, Nintendo is offering um $20 discounts on select games, including Breath of the Wild, New Super Mario Bros. U, Splatoon 2, Mario Maker 2, the or- Paper Mario, The Origami King, Kirby Super Allies, uh, Link's Awakening, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain, and Xenoblade Chronicles. All for 40 bucks. Nintendo never does sales on these games. 
Yeah. Uh, so Breath of the Wild for forty dollars is a pretty damn good deal. A very good deal. Mario Maker for forty dollars. I've seen it for forty dollars before, but uh, mm-hmm. still, I jump on that shit. Listen, if you like the boss fights in Metroid Dread, you'll love the level designs people come up with in Super Mario Maker Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. That's cool. That so we got we got our first little tease of some Black Friday sales. Yeah. Uh this is the most I think Nintendo's done in a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lot, but it's the most they've done in a long time. Uh anyway, Microsoft's flight controller up for pre order. What what? Is this Turtle Beach? Uh, yes. Headset maker Turtle Beach announced in June that it was entering the flight sim market. And now its news controller, compatible what? with the Series X, Xbox One, and Windows 10, is up for pre order called the Velocity One Universal Flight Controller. The $379.95 device will be available for pre order starting on at 12 p.m. Eastern on November 3rd. There is a limit of two per customer. I don't need this. Right? Nobody needs this. This is specifically for the type of people who like take flight simulator way too seriously. Yes. This is for a retired pilot who wants to start playing video games and wants to feel like he did back when he used to fly planes. <laughs> Play smash That's on that, you sport. coward. <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of want to play flight simulator. I'm a little interested. Yeah. But I'm not three hundred and seventy nine dollars interested. You know, yeah. I don't need all. No. I don't need all that. No, uh, I don't even know what everything would do. I don't know how planes work, and you know what? I kind of yeah. don't want to know. <laughs> I don't know if I'd feel better or worse about it. People say you people say if you're afraid of flying, you need to learn how to fly, and I'm like, nah, no, no, thanks, no. If you're afraid of flying, you don't have to fly. Look at these little jobbies and doohickeys and 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 gonads. I know. So like flight simulator works on a standard Xbox controller, but this clearly has more buttons than the <laughs> standard Xbox controller. I don't I don't know if some of those are for show or what. Yeah. I mean, it's different if you plug this thing into a computer, but like yeah. if you're plugging it into an Xbox, those are buttons. I'm very I'm very confused, and I'm and I'm very curious what other games <laughs> could use this yeah. freaking thing for. Now this I can't I can't justify this. However, I'm gonna have to justify the Densha Dego uh, uh, controller. Oh, the train simulator. The controller. train simulator controller. Yo, there's a freaking. Yeah. This looks like a PlayStation original PlayStation Densha Dego controller. Type 2 controller. It might be. It's, I mean, that's an ongoing series. I don't know what system it is. It's USB powered. Conto con- controller. Controla. <laughs> um, yeah, USB? That doesn't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, there, yeah, no, you can get it from PlayAsia. You can get uh, one for the new Switch, yeah. uh, new Switch game. I might have to, might have to hook it up. Is that a cup holder? <laughs> <laughs> this one looks worse than the old one. It's literally just two levers. Yeah, gonna have to give it a try. Anyway, uh, hey, no more Metal Gear games ever again. Oh no, wait, no, we're not doing yeah. that one yet. We, I, I skipped like a million of them. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about it. Me- no more Metal Gear games ever again. Yeah. Uh, sorry. At least until they figure out the uh, the rights to all the historical footage they use in the game. Uh, hold on. Page is still loading. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, are disappearing from digital storefronts today, while Konami renews the license for the historical archive footage they contain, the publisher announced today. Uh, Although the removals are temporary, Konami's statement doesn't give a timeline for when the games might return to affect uh, affect the storefronts. We sincerely ask for your patience and understanding as we work towards making these products available for purchase once again. 
The removals affect various digital re-releases of the two games, including which originally came out in 2001 and 2004, the best year of gaming. These include the <laughs> PS3, the Xbox 360, the Vita, and the NVIDIA Shield TV remasters of both games, the 3DS version of Metal Gear Solid 3, and the GOG re-release of MGS2. The game's HD collection is also disappearing from PlayStation Now. Uh, while Konami hasn't provided details which historical footage is the problem, both, both MGS2 and 3 use real-world footage in lengthy cutscenes to weave their stories together with, 21st, with 20th century historical events. This footage plays a significant role in establishing the atmosphere of both games, so it's reassuring that Konami is going down the route of, re of renewing licenses for the footage rather than attempting to strip it out. A, a, a few podcasts ago we showed the uh the uh the cutscene of the um of, of of the big chungus scene yes. in metal gear solid liquid explaining big chungus to solid snake when they fade to black and go to the historical big chungus footage so yeah. it's a trope in metal gear to go to cut fade to black and then cut to like stock footage and apparently they lost yeah. the license to the stock footage i fear that konami doesn't care at all and they will just never renew it i don't know because i mean yeah if they cared they would have got gotten this done a while back they would have known they would have had a yeah they would have had a timetable for you know when to put the stuff up but we talked about it on the podcast too like a while ago that konami was going to have renewed interest in making games again mm -hmm. you know so also too if they wanted to like take down metal gear solid they would have done it like not soon after kojima left there's there's some i mean they kind of i mean they were they, they kind of doing that yeah but... they did a lot with through neglect and they're continuing to do yeah. so i just feel like there's the people in their games uh, section over at Konami just don't care at all. They're, 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 there's like one guy holding down the ship and he just forgot about those historical archive footage. Yeah. Well, uh, as the article points out, other games are hit similarly by licensing issues. Um, in 2012, uh, GTA Vice City was pulled from digital stores on PC over music licensing issues. And when it returned, it, there were reportedly 10 songs missing from the soundtrack. A similar story uh, with the 2010 re-release of Crazy Taxi on PS3 and 360, which lacked the music and real-world bands of the original. What are they going to do? So just leave it common... black? What? They're just going to release an update that makes uh, that footage just a black screen? Well, <laughs> or they, or they probably have to put in new footage, which would be probably be very difficult to do. How do you um, only have a license for that for 10 years i feel like that i feel like that it's is very, a mistake it's very strange mm -hmm. because like like we said with the music examples for some reason video game licensing is not for ever mm -hmm. it's only for like a specific set of years so like what once like those license to a song is up that's it the game can't be sold anymore or once the license to stock footage is up, that's it. The game can't be sold anymore. It's not like movies where, like they get, I guess they pay a one-time fee to use the song in a movie, and then they can re-release it, you know, as much as they need to. Why not? I don't know. That's that's it's always something weird. that's like never made sense. To me. Yeah. You know what also really grinds my gears? I know oh, that there's go. a way to license music for YouTube videos. Yeah. But I don't know how. I would really love to know how to do that. But like, I don't mean like epidemic sound. I mean like, I want to put yeah. this Rolling Stone song in my YouTube video. I don't care how much it costs. That's what I right. mean. Like, there's a way to do that. I just don't know how to do it. It's probably a massive would, pain uh, in the ass. With ScreenWave now? That's a good question. I should I should ask. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, I mean, I feel like there's just a there's a way to there's a way to do it, and I'm just I'm just missing out on it because that'd be really yeah. cool. Imagine putting a fucking Beastie Boys song in a, in a in a YouTube video. Oh hell yeah! Which Rolling Stone song? None. I'm not gonna actually do that. 
I was playing the Beastie Boys for my daughter today. One of the very few times she let me play actual music that's not from Frozen or Moana. <laughs> and we were playing it. And then she goes, Bob. Yeah, Bob likes the Beastie Boys. It's like, this is that so. soy boy music that Bob would listen to. <laughs> hey, man. We're trying to get her to know what real music is like. Real New York music. Oh, yes, yes. Real Brooklyn music. Brooklyn music. And then the Ramones came on next, and then she got to hear what Queen's music is. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we're just going to go down the aisle, and next will be Billy Joel, so she understands what Nassau County sounds like. Right, right. Anyway, we got best selling Switch games here. Yahoo! Actually, wait, hold yeah, on. I got to so- pause. People are mad. I'm, I'm, not reading, I'm not reading notifications. Element 11, thank you for the six months. Six months of the better wood. Hey, now. It's not a fucking competition, right? Uh, Emily Dawn, thank you for the two months. Mecha Dragon with the seven months. There we go. Seven months and going strong, bros. Thank you, Mecha Dragon. And Fred with the 29 months. Thank you, Fred. Fred also pulls the uh, uh, comments from the previous week's Wolf Den Live so that we don't have to read any comments. He's he's yeah. the he's the uh, he's the front line uh, of of the of the Wolf Den comments. He's the unsung hero. Yes, he's protecting yeah. us. Anyway, uh, Switch sales. Here we go. Best selling Switch games of all time as of September thirtieth, twenty twenty one. It is officially Mario Kart Eight Deluxe with thirty eight point seventy four million copies sold. Must be a. It must not be a lot of releases this month. <laughs> so, oh, it's September. This is yeah. This is, and this is all oh, time. Oh, this is all time. I'm so sorry. That time. makes this makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. So, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe, best selling game on the Switch of all time. Best selling Mario Kart game of all time. It eclipsed the the Wii Mario Kart on the Wii. Damn. To take that. So it makes sense that you would bundle the game with the switch and try to sell it to people who haven't bought a switch yet. <laughs> um, okay. So number two is animal crossing, yes. uh, which makes uh, also makes sense, but that's kind of crazy. Yeah. That had a crazy year last year. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, yeah. That only came out last year. Mario Kart eight deluxe came out in 2017. Animal crossing came out last year and it sold that much already. That's crazy. Well, I think, I think Animal Crossing had help because it was the perfect pandemic game. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, um, number three is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is also pretty crazy because that's like a fighting game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Breath of the Wild with 24.13 million. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Party at number seven. Uh, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Um, at number eight, Splatoon two at number nine, and Ring Fit Adventure at number ten. Ring Fit Adventure is kind of surprising. I, I know it's big in Japan, but I'm kind of surprised at how big it is in America too. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it was a success, but you know, I don't, I didn't think of it as you know, tenth best selling game on the Switch successful. Well, when I think about Ring Fit Adventure, I'm immediately drawing parallels to Wii Fit, yeah. and uh, uh, how big that was. That was insane, yeah. and. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really see it doing as well. But I mean, number ten—that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Um. I th- I think I liked Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee more than I liked Sword and Shield. And uh, I'm I'm kind of surprised it didn't do as well. Like it it, it did significant. I mean, it's number eight versus number five. But uh, yeah. it's twenty two point sixty four million versus thirteen point eighty three million. So I feel like uh, I, think, I feel like you got Pikachu and Eevee on the cover. They're the recognizable ones. Like you got the nostalgia yeah. factor. I feel like it would have done a little better. I feel like you know maybe Sword and Shields did better because people recognize that as the next mainline Pokemon mm-hmm. game, whereas you know Pikachu and Eevee were more like you know so, a, a side game more or less. Uh, Chris BX in the chat says it's because you are 32, Bob. I'm 29 for the fourth time, you piece of shit. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of my chat, you piece of shit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, not a lot of surprises here, I guess. Uh, yeah. 
I'm I'm a little surprised Breath of the Wild is is, is number four, but uh, I mean we knew Smash Bros did really good. We knew Animal Crossing did really good. Yeah. And we knew we definitely knew Mario Kart was we gonna definitely be up knew there. Mario Crossing did yeah. Uh, anyway, um, this is interesting to me. I didn't know this was happening. Nintendo is opening its second official store in Japan. So Ooh. Nintendo had their first official store here in New York. They didn't even have one yeah. in Japan. Didn't make any sense. Uh, and then they didn't have anything until they had one in a random airport somewhere. I don't even remember where. But then they opened one in Tokyo. And I tried to go there. I went outside of it. I could see it. I could smell it. I could taste it, but I couldn't go in. Um, I was a week too early. Um, and that was in Tokyo. Uh, Shibuya Parko. Now there's going to be one in Osaka. And I wish I could read this, but I can't. So uh, just know they're going to be opening one in uh, Osaka, which is pretty damn cool. I would love to go to that. That is cool. The translation says, uh, news release opening Nintendo Osaka, the official shop directly managed by Nintendo has been posted. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. There's also a bunch of Pokemon centers all over Japan. I think the Pokemon, I mean, the Nintendo store in New York used to be a Pokemon center and it just turned into a Nintendo store. Um, Did it really? I think so. And it's still technically a Pokemon center because there's a massive Pokemon section. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's, there's a ton of Pokemon centers all over Japan, but only one Pokemon store, uh, only one Nintendo store so far. Um, right. So uh, I'm interested to see how that's going to go. Hopefully there's there, there's a bunch. I mean, there's no reason why not to have Nintendo stores everywhere. I think the Nintendo store here in the city is one of the best things to check out when you come to New York. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Another reason for me to go back to Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have here? Oh, we have 2K cancels unannounced a $53 million game. What? In an earnings call statement on Wednesday, 2K Games described a $53 million impairment charge in relation to the decision to end development on an unannounced title. According to Bloomberg, the game was a project codenamed Vault in development at Hangar 13. Hangar 13, the developers of Mafia 3 and the current uh, shepherds of the overall Mafia franchise. Reportedly, Vault had gone through several iterations before it was ultimately canceled at 2K. The current version of the game faced challenges due to the consequences of the pandemic, as well as reboots and technological hiccups. The game, which has been in development since 2017, featured its superheroes and competitive online gameplay. That is crazy that you spend That's that old. much money on a game and they're like, no, and just, no, <laughs> especially a big publisher like 2K. Like, yeah, they will put out a garbage game <laughs> and just be like, yeah, be like, maybe we'll make a little bit of our money back from this garbage. Yeah. But they were just like, no, and like and like they also have other franchises that like help make up the cost of some of, of if like if say project vault was garbage they have money from nba 2k that they could help you know bolster the company up overall to like make up the difference um but to sink 53 million dollars into a project and then just they like, cancel it like you don't even try to salvage it that's i mean it looks like they did try to salvage it but they should have seen that it was unsalvage unsalvageable way before this. Yeah, well, like like a couple million, just a couple million before this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I would I could see a company like Nintendo or even like a Sony first party studio spending a lot of money on a game and then being like, we can't release this, and then just canning it because yeah. they care about quality. But a big like triple a publisher like 2k i feel like uh i feel like quality is the not not the first thing on their yeah. mind <laughs> i feel like the dollar signs are the is the first thing on their mind oh yeah um, definitely anyway so very interesting i would love to see like an unseen 64 about this one yeah lastly we have spider-man coming to the avengers Woo. we finally Who's have a date 
for when Spider-Man is coming to a Marvel's Avengers. So um, exciting. He was announced before the game was before the game launched. Spider-Man was announced as coming uh, to Avengers and he is coming November 30th only on Sony platforms. Fuck you, Xbox and do, PC players. Do we know what he looks Piece like? Shit. No. Dumb. Yeah, I hope he's. No, we do not. I hope he looks like he does in the uh, uh, Sony games. That'd be cool. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's going to look terrible. <laughs> you love this game. You love this Avengers game. I liked it up until a point. Mm-hmm. I thought it, it was like I could get behind this until it started like basically t- telling you like you should really be playing this online and also buying all this loot <laughs> with your hard earned money so I did play a little bit of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy because that, mm-hmm. that has a demo on Switch oh oh yeah it's, it's the cloud version so I was able to play like not very much of it oh you I thought you, you looked like you were very cheery about it Two things. One, mm-hmm. I don't think the game is good a good fit for Switch. Okay. That it definitely feels like a game that is meant to be played on a television. Um and like most games like that can be played on Switch, but I don't think playing it in handheld benefits that type of game. That's one. Two. The primary combat loop is that of a typical third person shooter. Mm-hmm. It in a modern third person shooter, and they're all like this. You hold left trigger to aim and right trigger to fire. Doesn't necessarily work the same way in this game. You hold right trigger to fire, but left trigger locks on and the lock on is not very good. (laughs) So they just expect you to free aim with the right analog stick regardless. Interesting. And I don't, I don't like the way that works. Mm Mm-hmm. I, th- I, I think I could get used to it, but I don't know if I would want to. So I'm. this is definitely a wait for a sale game. I've heard a lot of great things you know about Guardians I mean? of the Galaxy. I've heard it's very good, but that little hump is something I got to get over. So how does the cloud version work? Like, like did you, how, how was playing it via the cloud? Yeah, it worked pretty well. I mean, Sometimes the graphics would like, you know, become lesser quality, but overall it felt like I was playing a regular game on the Switch. Very good. Oh, I mean, I I was actually pleasantly surprised by that experience. I hope more developers take advantage of that because it'd be a great way to, you know, get more AAA games on the system. Hey, that's all the news. Oh, yes. You know what time it is right now? It's this time. It's time for this. And here we have this tweet by Spencer. It says, I love the Guy Fox mask. It's so cool. And it's a picture of Guy Fox. That's, uh, that's funny. That's it. It's the whole tweet. Wow. Anyway, show Eric's tweet. I forgot what Eric's tweet was. Oh, it was a reply to one of my tweets. Hold on. Was it a reply to one of my tweets? Or did I just reply? No, it wasn't. I replied to him. Did I reply to him? Eric did have a good tweet this week. Somebody link it in the chat. I don't want to. I don't want to go find it. Oh wait, there! I just found it. I scroll past like an idiot. Here it is. This is Eric's stupid ass Eric's tweet. Why are people with glasses considered smart when to get them, they had to fail a test? <laughs> that is very good. He brings up a good point. He does. That we should talk about more often. Yeah. Uh, hey, now we'll talk to you guys for a hot minute. Yes. Uh, first, we will answer a, select- a selection of comments from last week's Wolfden podcast that were left on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash wolfden podcast uh also hey l l e t thank you for the one whole year of subscriptions i very much appreciate it 
We got last week's Wolf Dead Live on the YouTube channel. We got Lou the Lunatic. Yeehaw. Who says, sorry, I missed y'all live. You ever have one of those days where you get a where you get bit by a wild mole? Is that a, a, does that actually happen? I don't think I have. I can't say that I have. And then your wife oh, there's more. Hold on. And then your wife gets worried, so you go to the hospital or emergency and wait until 10 30 p.m for a rabies shot and then you find out from the doctor that moles are not known to carry rabies so you just got a script for antibiotics and go home anyway great episode looking good guys medieval and warrior land 2 and of course king of fighters 98 were also great 1998 games thanks thanks Lou. Uh, take i'm glad you're feeling better yeah. after that mole bite a mole attack. A wild mole. Where were you? Yeah. That you were attacked by a mole. Would you were you, were you would you fall in his hole? Yeah. I have a, I have many more questions about this. There are so many experience. more questions. Anyway, Al Al Quan Palmer. Will, we need you to make a return. I'm tired of watching comics explained. Uh, I'm sure Fred purposely put that in. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Just one do, day, one... just do, just put put as little effort and as possible into the video, just so you can make the video. You know what I mean? It's like you know, fire it out. Bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Just turn the camera on and just talk, and then then turn it off, and that's it. I should, I should try that. I should just try to make like the most low effort piece of shit. It's how people make daily content. It's true. Uh, ben Turner. Hashtag Will was right. Oh, that's because of the you picked the right year. You picked the right year for the best year in video games. I don't know if it was that or the whole 2D, 3D nope, argument. No, couldn't have been that. that. Couldn't have been that. <laughs> Definitely uh, you picked a great year for the best year of video games. Definitely not the whole 2D, 3D thing. <laughs> oh, uh, this... Uh, uh, Fred DM'd me and asked me if it was okay to include this one. Tristan Snyder, who was banned from the channel and many other channels, says, no offense to Bob and Will, but being banned from Wolf Den Twitch channel just doesn't make me want to watch the entire podcast. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm, so, I'm just sick of and tired of getting banned from channels because I didn't do anything that bad. That bad? He didn't do anything that bad. <laughs> I understand if Bob won't put this in next week's podcast, but I just want to announce something I think is bullshit. Now, you can think it's bullshit all you want. This isn't a democracy. I'll, I'll fucking kick you out if I just don't. If I just don't like the general vibe, you're out of here. Um, here's the thing, bro. You are whispering other people in our in in in, in, in so some dumb shit in 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 our in our chat, and you were just being generally annoying. And you you comment like like eight comments in a row, and then you made another account to come back in and do the same sort of bullshit. No, yeah. You know, welcome in the community. You could listen to podcasts all you want. Just shut up. And don't yeah. talk to me. Um, you got very annoying. That's it. There doesn't need to be a reason for why you're annoying. You just, if I think you're annoying, it's enough to, to, to enough grounds to ban you. Um, also, pretty sure you're under 18, and this chat, this channel is for people over 18. If you're under 18 yeah. here, and I find out you're under 18, you're banned. Anyway, uh, A. Peria. Will's right to, oh, you fucking piece of shit. Will's right. 2D 100% refers to the play style and not whether or not it has 3D polygonal models. 3D fighters are a genre and in and of themselves. Then why why are 3D side scrolls not a genre then? If 3D fighters are a genre, why are 3D side scrolls not a genre? 3D fighters, there's a difference between a 3D fighter and a 2D fighter. A game, and I said this last week. Yeah, there's also a, a difference between a 2D side scroller. No, no, because a 2D side scroller and a 3D side scroller are still side scrollers. They still go from left to right across a two dimensional plane. A 3D fighter like Soul Calibur uses the entire board. It uses the entire 360 degree of the board. Whereas a 2D fighter like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, even the modern ones, only have combat on a two dimensional plane, on a flat plane. I just think there's That's easy ways to refer to these things instead of conflating the graphics and the gameplay in the same word. But 
but side scrolling mm-hmm. a side scroller mm-hmm. is by nature mm-hmm. a two dimensional gameplay genre it's, regardless I, I, I of will, how I the will, graphics are i will agree that you're playing in two dimensions cuz you can't you can't argue that i just think there's nothing wrong with saying 3d side scroller or just calling it a side scroller calling it a uh, uh actually no you have to call it a 3d side scroller calling it a 3d platformer that that's a completely different type of game yeah that's a completely different thing the, the problem is a 3d side scroller is like doesn't make any sense because a side scroller by nature cannot be 3d the the graphics, the graphics are 3d are, the graphics are 3d but the gameplay is strictly 2d right because you can't yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like this. The I don't like this. All scroll side scrollers are two D. I don't like that. Name one side scroller that isn't three D. Name one side scroller that isn't Super Mario. That isn't Super Paper Mario. That has a three dimensional gameplay aspect to it. No, 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 no. We're not saying the gameplay aspect. Metroid Dread would be a three D side scroller to me because it's but got three D graphics. Point, at any point in Metroid Dread, do you interact with the Z-axis? No. Do you interact with depth? No. So it is a two-dimensional game. It's 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 you play it in two dimensions, but yes. the graphics are in three D. So it's a three D side make- side scrollers are all played in two dimensions, but the graphics can be three D. So I think there's plenty. Is three D side scroller can be a thing. I'm dying on this hill. <laughs> okay. <sighs> have fun on your lonely ass hill. Yeah. Anyway, he finishes by saying 3D fighters are, are are a genre in and of themselves, and as are 2D fighters because of the gameplay. Yeah, that's what Will just said. Yeah. Anyway, guys, how you doing? And now we're in the chat for two seconds because I want to eat some pizza. Yeah. Everybody, tell me how right I am. Uh, what is Donkey Kong Country Returns somebody said this that is a I mean that's a that's a side scroller with 3D graphics oh my god still played on a two dimensional plane what what a a 3D side scroller it is a side scroller with 3D graphics (laughs) Uh, what's the best 3D Metroid? What's the best 3D Metroid Dreader Prime? <laughs> Make a poll. We did. I'm the old man yelling at the cloud. Yeah, they call. I'm not talking. No, we're not doing that. Not every. Talk to me about something. Come on. Travel gifted is up to damn it, Janet. Thank you so much. Rick MSGT with 10 months. Hey, man, on top of our 10 month broversary, it was my B day last week. Thanks for the great content. Wood. All right, he's banned now. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Oh, but he just subbed. Uh... Um,. I'm trying to ignore all of the comments about about the the 3D side scroller debate because <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> because you do, you don't want to admit that you're wrong. I'm not wrong. It's an easy way to distinguish uh, it. 3D side scroller. It's it because because it the gameplay style no, is side but... scroller and 3D refers to the graphics. When you take Mario and you make New Super Mario Brothers, what's the diff? There's some. There's a glaring difference between New Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario World. What's the difference? No, it's still a, it's still a 2D it's still a 2D game. No, but the glaring difference scroller. is it's now in 3D. It's just also the gameplay is side scrolling. A side scroller by nature does not have access to a three dimensional plane. The gameplay. Right. The game I agree. Play, by, def- by definition. I am so with if you. you. Call it a three, if you say a 3D side scroller, that mm-hmm. starts to imply that in addition to the traditional 
X and Y axis that you have access to in a side scroll, you also have access to the Z axis for no. some reason. No, you yes! can't. In a side scrolling game, side scrolling, it scrolls yes. to the side. How the fuck would you go in and out? How, the, well, how would you Z? You can't Z in a side scrolling game. So the 3D is referring to the graphics. Again, how are we going to distinguish Super Mario World? And new Super Mario Brothers. How are we going to do it without a term like 3D side scroll? It's a beautiful term. All right. You want to know what a 3D side scroll technically is? What? A game like Final Fight or Streets of Rage or Turtles in Time. Because that game, it's it's a side scroller, but you have access to up, down, and diagonal. But they're not, but they're not 3D. <laughs> No, that's up. That's ver I'm calling that vertical. That's ver that's you're, you're not actually vertical? you're like okay. barely you're like barely going in. Uh I tried I tried to meet you on your level, dude. No, nah, it's there. You're going you're kind of just basically going up and down on that in that game. Um uh, what about Blaster Master? I don't fucking know anything about Blaster Master. Blaster Master's That's got like overhead no, Blaster Master is like a side scroll, but then it goes into an overhead view. Uh, overhead like different. Jefferson Sond Kiddo, whatever, says vertical side scroller. Now, I don't agree with that, but Back to the Future on the NES yeah. scrolls vertically. Can you still call it a side scroller? Or would you call that a vertical scroller? Because it's not scrolling to the side, it's scrolling up. I don't know. Like what those games are technically called, games like that, Akari Warriors, um, Blaster Master. <sighs> Hold on, let me. Those are generally called top down games, you know, or overhead uh, view. Right? Yeah, yeah. You would call that top. That's right. The 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 definition yeah. would probably be top down. Is is Paperboy a side scroller? Paperboy is a diagonal scroller. <laughs> yeah, Paperboy is just weird. <laughs> That's not a side scroller. That's a damn strafer. <laughs> Somebody said, "So wait, is Fire Emblem Three Houses a side scroller? A two D side scroller with three D graphics?" I don't know any. I is I mean I don't. How do you? Is it a turn based game? Like, don't you not move in the game? I don't know how yeah, Fire Emblem was. works. Uh, Crash Bandicoot keeps getting said. A uh, Crash Bandicoot is a three D game, not just because it has three D graphics, but because you do access the three-dimensional plane in that game what is Star Fox on the snes that is a 3d game that is a 3d game isn't paperboy an isometric yeah uh, a diagonal yeah. scrolling game <laughs> yeah um crash is linear 3d yeah it's either you're going yeah into the you're going away from the camera or you're side scrolling yeah What is Super Mario Bros. 3 since you can go behind the white blocks? Uh, that's just that's a little Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. So it's like being in Adobe Illustrator and hitting uh, Command Shift uh, bracket. It's not actually like really, it's not really like depth. It's like a fake depth. Yeah. Oh my God, me and Rick MSGT said fake depth at the same time. Wow. Fake depth. Oh, wow. All right. Eric says, I wonder if my dad will know what the answer is. I'll ask him when he gets back from 7-Eleven to get cigarettes. All right. You let me know. Uh, yeah. I want my pizza. Mm, I'm definitely going to have a snack after this. Guys, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast. Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Um, oh, Jackson's on. 
Everybody go watch Jackson. He's he's uh speed yeah. running. He's speed running Matt. <laughs> he's trying to speed run Mario 64. Ask uh, him what he thinks a side scroller with 3D graphics is. Just say, is this a side scroller? Because he's playing he's <laughs> playing Mario. Uh so go over there, say hello, uh, and I will see you. I want to stream tomorrow, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I got a lot of work to do on the video. And then I'm I'm not going to stream for a while after that. So uh, sorry. But I'll see you definitely for a video this week. Also, a little fun little thing. We're going to have a little small little taste of merch this Ooh. Thursday. Make sure you have notifications on the main Wolf Den channel. It's going to be a mouse pad. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> a desk mat a desk mat yeah it's not gonna be a mouse pad of me with boobs see you later goodbye bye